we have Uche Jumbo in the house and she's added another name to her title and that's Rodriguez, right? Rodriguez. I got it. Yes. You're welcome to Saturday night. <laughs> Thank you. Whoa, Thank you. That's a compound name now. <laughs> but we'll still know you as Uche Jumbo. It's still my brand. Yes. It's still your brand, right? Yes. And it's good. Mm. So how does it feel, you know, to have a third name added to your, you know, to your it, names? Marriage is not all that, you know, they make it out to be. It's just another face of your life and if you're lucky enough to find someone who outside the love and everything you can call your friend you just kind of enjoy it you're just talking about it in a very you know, <laughs> casually <a> very casually <laughs> and before now it was not very casual <laughs> so what has what has what has informed this casual disposition to um you know? no because i am i think Lots of maybe because of the fact that we did the secret wedding and all that, there was just so much focus on him, everything, and forgetting the reason why we're here, which is work. That's <laughs> true. That's so true. And, and so you I'm actually to... mentioned secret. Yes, it was. You admit it secret. was secret. It was a secret um, wedding. It was. It was. Uh, the press didn't know about it till. It happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Smart babe. It, it has to just happen that way. Uh, because um, when you find something precious, you don't want anything to spoil it for you. And you might come across selfish, which you will quickly, you know, apologize for after <laughs> the date. I love the way you talk. <laughs> and your friends will pardon you. By the time they see this show, they will pardon you. They want to see They have, where you're actually. From. They, they have. have. They have. Okay, Those... so there are some fans out there too. Who okay, you mean the fans? Mm. Oh. They know at least I've released some pictures. <laughs> you know. So, so why, why the secrecy? Why did you decide to just go that way? Um. Uh, because um, I was uh, in a relationship with someone who is from a different culture, who really didn't know anything about Nollywood. Mm. And, and the, the, the internet uh, blogging and what have you. Mm. So I didn't want a situation where it would be a tough process for him to gradually mm. ease into what I do. You know, you have to, you can't just like that for something that is um, a life-changing situation for someone. I'm used to it. Uh, I mean, it's part of what we sign for, for people to talk about us, even if they don't know us. You know, if you don't want to be talked even about. Even if there's no iota of truth to yes. what they say. Sometimes you can read something about yourself, the only truth is your name. And in my case, sometimes you don't even spell it right. It's Jumbo instead of Jumbo. And, but that's, that's, you know, the path that I've chosen. But I don't have to subject someone else, force someone else to accept it without, you know, kind of, you know, gradually easing. That's, that's just why. You know, because at a, at a point, it was no longer about me. It was about another person who I really didn't want anything to affect, you know, because of the industry that I was in. So that was it. It wasn't about protecting myself, actually. It was about protecting my, my, my partner. So where did you get this? Who did you consult to do this systematic uh, protection of your relationship? I didn't actually. It's experience because I had been in a relationship before that was somewhat, you know, more in the pages of papers than actually me having it, you know. And um, I didn't want a situation. After I, I, I got burnt from the relationship, I knew I t took some of the blame for not protecting your walls. You know, because the more, the more you grow in this industry, the more it's important to you to move your life away from your work. You know, because when they collide, sometimes it's not pretty. So. I worked hard to do that. It's the experience. No one actually told me to do that. Did you grow up with your mother or your grandmother? Um, both, actually. I wasn't mm. an easy child. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll confess. <laughs> I wasn't an easy child. Oh, my you know. goodness. Uh, if there's anything that gives my mother joy these days, it's not even about the fame or whatnot, or whatever the fame has brought. It's the fact that I'm calmer and... Uh, suddenly, I'm not that child, you know, when they ask. 
who will be your first child to bring pregnancy, you know, home, you know, without the husband, it will be you, So Can you imagine? <laughs> What yeah, a reputation. So, um, I was, I was, that's the scary part of trying to have a baby. So, oh God, please. I apologize for everything I've done to my mom or I did to her. Please do not give me a child that was once like I, I was. Can you imagine? <laughs> yes, because in those days when you were giving your mom stress, you would say, you will have a child. Your child will do this to you. Hmm. You know, I know when mothers say that. Scary to think about it these days. Very true. Mm. Very true. <laughs> and then speaking of your growing up, can you tell us a bit about your background? I'm I'm from Abriba, Abia State. Okay. I grew up in Aba. In, I was born in Enugu. I grew up uh, in Aba, and um, wasn't an easy child. I went to two different secondary school, hmm. three different secondary school. Were I you spent. Kicked, a, you were kicked out from one to the other. Or um. Not? Sometimes my dad was just moving me around like they can't like why can't you just you know focus and i was such a brilliant child so and um i was also a tomboy you know and so i now you're, rather a tom, you're a tom girl now i mean <laughs> all those features have for some reason disappeared i don't know how you did it but you tell us i can't be with my hips <laughs> You know, so, so you were the black sheep, um, so to speak. Yes, I was. <laughs> so the the I, I the, the good thing is when I look at my life now and all all that I have come into, it's not really about the fame. It's about um, finding a part, and then uh, believing in it, and then you know, the rest is history. So, but were you? Did you go through the the, the ropes of uh, education? Did you follow it through, or at one time you just said, "Well, no, I've actually, had because a tragedy happened earlier in life, which could have been bad, you know, but it turned out to be a blessing. That's when I left home. I think my my dad's death was really what kind of molded me into becoming someone who is going to disappoint people for what they have said I was going to become. Mm. <laughs> it sounds so That's, easy now. Yeah, it does sound very easy. It but sounds so easy now, but it wasn't. as well. Very it touching. It wasn't. You very know. touching. Yes, I left home at 14. And um, all of a sudden, I, I think that probably a part of my life that I have not been talking about and is actually one part of my life I'm most proud of. Hmm. And that I never talked about it, I didn't know why. I, I didn't even think it was important until some person wanted to blackmail me, so, so to speak. Like, if you don't give me so, so amount of money, I'm going to tell the press you ran away from home at 16. I'm like, please, boss, if you want to blackmail me, do it with the right age. It was at 14. Now, which number do you need? Because so I can find it and send to you. That was so, brave. No, because it, that's, that, it, I wasn't saying it to be brave. I was saying it because, are you kidding me? Do you think I'm ashamed of that? I am not. That's, that's what brought me here. Uh, probably maybe because of the way it was coined, that you ran away at 14 or 16, as you know the story goes, that you ran away with a man. So probably that's why no, they I didn't you even know. sensationalize no, it. No, no. That, that one was being... Uh, in fact, it was when Mixed a press up. person asked me that question that I'm like, whoa, hmm. I never heard that one before. You uh, did you just add that to yourself? He's like, no, I didn't. I'm like, I never heard that part before. No, no, actually, it wasn't that. I ran away from mm, my family, my immediate family, in search of my mother's part of the family. Okay. Like I said, because a tragedy had happened, and um, I didn't like where I was going to be shipped to. They had discussed it and all that, and, you know, I just stole my uncle's address from my mom and ran away. Smart one. You know, and then when he saw me, Funny enough, that was the first time he was seeing me. He just saw me in his office. He said, you are this person's daughter. I'm like, yes. That was blood right there. And that was it. That was a turning point for that you. Was, that was it. You mm. know, so the only thing I, you know, at that point, I owed anybody, I owed myself, was to be more focused. There's no need for all this. There's enough time for that later. That, but even the young people that work with me these days, I say, don't worry. Don't hurry the growing up process. There's yeah, enough time yeah. for that. You know, it's important that they know that. There's no hurry in the growing up process. 
Quite sure. Uh, you just ease into it. Okay, now let's come into your professional life. Uh, when exactly did you um, have that first contact with acting? acting? Oh, that's Fidelis Duca. You know, he has not paid me for the job. Every <laughs> time I say it, I have to say that so people will understand that. Those early days, we were doing it. It wasn't about the money. It was about the joy, acting for act's sake. And then, you know, you, 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 you won't be paid. You wait and buy the film and you call people to sit down and watch the film. It was just the joy of this. That's why I so much love Nollywood. It's a child of circumstance. Mm. You know, my very first lead, I haven't been paid for it. And that's like 13 years ago or heading, yeah. So they are just, I think about five first films I did. My family didn't even know I was doing those films. I don't think I was even paid. You know, so, but it, it kept me out of trouble. You know, it kept me busy. We should set up a recovery, debt uh, recovery. <laughs> uh, we should set one up. Oh. Committee. We should set one debt recovery committee to recover all the monies that have been owed no, over no, the years. No, no, but it's good. I just say it, you know, to encourage others, and not because of the money. In fact, I should be the one, you know, calling them like, do you need help? Because they brought me here. <laughs> so at the time you were running away, did you ever think, did you ever imagine that you would become an actress? No. Those, to those moments? No. My life, uh, there's nothing happening in my life right now that I imagined. Hmm. You know, I was just making, you know, um, use of every opportunity God brought my way. I did not. I never. I like to say, oh, yeah, I, I knew I was going, I worked out at it, that would be a lie. I never, I never knew. I just, at every opportunity, I never let any, you know, pass by without at least trying. That's, that's, that's just it. So once you got into the acting world, there was no turning back? There wasn't, even when the job weren't coming. I kept at it. I started writing scripts, you know, and I could blackmail you with my scripts. You know, <laughs> you want the script, give me this role. Hmm. At that point, it wasn't also about the money. <laughs> you know, so, but I kept at this uh, because I, I kind of noticed that this job, uh, at the end of the day, what, what pays is a passion. That's actually why some of us are still here. Because in Hollywood, um, we, 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 we were used to, or the Nollywood we came to see is not what it is today. Uh, my, 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 my very first um, decision, the very first time I thought about investing in Nollywood, I was, I was told those kind of films, oh, if you don't make a film to part four or uh, three at that time, you, will, you won't make your money back. But I just wanted us to sit back, okay, this is the, you know, the industry that has given us so much you know so much made some of us you know brands and giving us a voice and from where i'm an abri bag girl so i'm an abri bag girl who suddenly found the voice it has to be loud you know so i said i, I would do this so i started as an executive producer i started first with nollywood hustlers and we just generally made fun of the way we make films I laughed about it because i knew where i was you know heading to in filmmaking because I was going to be treating more of advocacy stuff. So I needed to ease, laugh about where we are and pick what I want to be doing. Uh, you know, I wanted to be the kind of films I wanted to be doing as a filmmaker. So the list goes, Nollywood Hustlers, Holding Hope, you know, um, Damage, A Mother's Fight. Um, the list goes on and, and then... Um, and those are the Lightning. movies you have produced. I, I have executive produced. Yes. Executive produced. Yes. So how many movies do you have to your credit? Um, uh, in my studio now, we have like 13. 13? We then, we, we, if we include the one just coming out next week, which is Lies Mentel and Force the Two. Whoa. We're at it. We just finished uh, filming um, uh, Unconditional. It's about child theft and all that. It's also some sort of advocacy. You know. All right. Um, let uh, let's pause here for a moment. Let the viewers enjoy what Uche <laughs> Jumbo is made of. Saturday night, we'll be right back. 
Stay with us. You both have staff locals. How come? You must be very simple asking that question. You bastard! You sleep with everything in sketch and you have the guts to ask me to send wake up to Is this the night vigil? The church services that you lied to me you were attending every other day? How many girls do you remember using condoms with? A lot. The maker? What did you just say to me? Erica? I said a lot of men use condom, do not use condom with women. Welcome back. That was Lies Men Tell by Uche Jumbo. That's a very, I mean, the word itself, the coinage. Um, How did you get that title? Um, I, because that's the first thing that came to my head when I heard the story that, you know, inspired the film. You know, I'm like, oh God, lies men tell. It was a friend of a friend or a sister of a friend who, whose husband uh, was, in quotes, hanging out at a hotel. And the husband came with a story how he was robbed and how robbers took the car. So she was looking at him and wondering, and his face didn't shake. You know, he was, he, you know, he kind of described this fantastic robbery accident that happened, the only God saved him from. But it kind of re. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. What's, what's, I don't what, know what, if she's what, watching. <laughs> it kind of shocked her. Okay, let me, let me not use that word. It kind of shocked her at the man that she's been with for 11 years. How long, you know, he's been lying to her. For him to lie with a straight face and she knows where the car is. So what should viewers take out of this uh, movie? Well, well, my character um, dealt with it in her own way. If it's me, I wouldn't even deal with it that way. Because seriously... Um, being faithful is, is not a one-way street. I don't care who you are. You know, you shouldn't demand what you will not, you know, give. Why do you think men lie? Well, this Desmond's character was the worst kind of man. <laughs> <laughs> the truth of the matter is that women know you're cheating. <laughs> and the lie is probably to yourself. Like, you should just, like, she's allowing you to do what you want to do. On the line, she's allowing. Is that why you traveled all the way from Nigeria? How did this sea, come to? Over the sea. <laughs> I and know where we are. Oh, God. <laughs> to get no. a road regret. No, get hell no. Please. No, sorry. Tell no. us, tell us, tell no. us. No, first of all, when I met my husband, I wasn't looking. Oh, really? Yes. That's what people really, you know, I wasn't looking. I was done with relationship. I was just going to focus on work. You know, and that was it. I was not looking at all. So it had no, it had, it had nothing whatsoever to do with who or where, you know, no, at all. I just met someone who really, we clicked. Just like <laughs> we that. We clicked. And I love to laugh. Just mm. like that. So what's married <laughs> life like? It's fantastic. I'm married to... A friend, someone I can call my friend, someone that will always have my back, and someone that I am not, um, I am, I am myself around him. I don't have to be someone else, you know. That was always what I was asking God to give me. So, of course, every woman knows what she wants in a man, you know, because some people can be fantastic boyfriends but horrible husbands. So, how are you dealing with this um, different cultural? Uh it's fun actually. Amalgamation. It's it's fun actually. Like sometimes I'll be talking to my husband, and he's like, no, 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 you're losing your accent. I'm like, no, I'm not. No, no, I'm talking like Nigerian. Ah. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, you know, so it's 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 fantastic. It's fantastic. Great. <laughs> now, know. I mean, now you have uh, you've gone through a lot of experiences in your life, starting from where you came from, your home, and the setting there. You moved, you gravitated, you rose through the ranks, you've, you're there at the pinnacle now. You, when you look back, is there, so, is there anything you would have done differently? No, except have me to guide me, <laughs> which is why I started my foundation. 
Mm. You know, the only thing is because there are so many young people these days, they think they know everything. Trust me, I was there too. I was a time I thought I knew everything. You know, but it's not everyone that will, that will wait for a tragedy to happen to change, you know, your perception or, or your, your behavior. So it's important that sometimes they just know. You know, you can do this, you can do this, but don't, don't be in a hurry. You know, the, the process just starts from, you know, the beginning. The whole point is making sure that the youth, whatever you can do, you start it on time. Whatever you think you're best at, bring only your best on board, that's it. Because we all have our flaws. So, the, you know, your strength is what push, that's, that's the only push you need. Your flaw is okay, keep it, we all have ours. And so your family who saw you, who hitherto saw you as a black sheep, how are they seeing you now, how do, now that <laughs> Uche is Uche Jumbo, how are they, how they taking it? Oh, well, I, I, um, I have been honored in my place and I have done things, you know, gone to lend my own voice in one or two things that I, I don't think is, you know, should still be going on. I'm, I'm a danganga of Abriba, so mm -hmm. if I don't speak, I don't know who will. And it's, it's my honor to be the person an Abriba girl would look at. I'm like, if she did it, I could do even much more. Of course, why not? You know, and um, I want to always let, let them you know, be able to say that, not just looking at me, but believing in, you know, in themselves, like I can do this, I can be a voice. There's nothing stopping me from just being quiet because I'm a girl, you know, and all that. Which is why I took the premiere of A Mother's Fight to Ab River Stadium. And that was one of my proudest moments. Can you beat that? Can <laughs> you beat like, that? One of my proudest moments. Can you beat that? Yeah. So we, you should be looking forward to motherhood as well. Absolutely. We're working hard for it. Really hard. Yeah. Day and night. We're <laughs> 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 well, working hard for it. <laughs> I hope you create enough time. How do you balance it? How do you balance the, the work at uh, your work, your work life, and your your family life? How do you oh, balance it? I I do vacation twice a year. Okay. And uh, my husband is as busy as I am actually. Even when I'm in New York, if it's not vacation time, I hardly see him. But what we do is, I, I do maybe like three months in Nigeria. I line up all my works that time. Mm -hmm. So as long as my people have, you know, access to you, you know, you know, um, uh, post production they are doing, then they are doing okay. So I can go be a wife <laughs> and all that. That's good. That's you know, good. it's planning. Everything in life is planning. Life is easier when you just plan the little things. And speaking of planning, what does the future hold for Uche Jumbo? I will just continue to work as hard as I do, continue to do the kind of films I want to watch, continue to make movies and tell, or tell human stories, advocacy stories, you know, comedy stories. Those movies that I can go and watch, I will continue to do it till the day I, I will do that. And on that note, we'll say we'll continue to celebrate <laughs> you as you continue to celebrate us, Nigeria and the movie industry in general. It's been an honor having yes, you. Yes, it's so, so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> you so much fun. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So on that note, we say thank you so much for staying tuned to this week's edition of Saturday Night. Until next week, be kind to one another. Good night.